I'm Sonia Baghdadi, and you're watching Advocate Now. Here are some of our favorite moments from last month's episodes. Well, Worthiness Warrior spotlights love and compassion, which is so crucial during a time when judgment and negativity seem to be so prevalent on this planet. How do you make space for open and judgment-free conversations on your podcast? I think it's really important to allow people to be themselves. And I wrote this in my book and I will think it for the rest of my life, but I try to remind myself that every single person grows up with their own belief system, their own background, where they come from, and they all believe in that just as strongly as what I believe in. And so while it helps that a lot of the people we have on the podcast are of similar values as we are, when that doesn't happen, I try to tap into that feeling of, okay, they're believing in what they believe in just as strongly as I believe in what I believe in. And I also think that that allows for open and honest conversations, which is more important than being right. We tried to get Chelsea to grow up with the idea of unconditional love, which is a challenge, but I think she embodies that and she challenges herself to really to move forward without judgment and love everyone. Um, and that just makes me very proud. And Chelsea, you were, of course, raised by two dads. There's been so much growth and progress within the LGBTQ plus community, but there's still a surprising stigma around gay parenting. How did being raised by your dad shape your own self-worth, would you say? I think it was absolutely vital in shaping my self-worth because my parents were so cool and proud of who they were. It showed me and modeled for me that I can be proud of who I am, no matter who I love, who I'm close to, what I want to do with my life. And they really fostered that self-worth and self-confidence in me. I think my daddy, the, you know, my dad, Kevin is my dad and his husband, my daddy, um, was really someone that built that self-confidence by constantly showing up every day and just telling me how perfect and beautiful and wonderful I am. But dad also fostered that self-confidence and self-worth in me by letting me experience more challenges and working through them and showing that I can do it on my own, that I have the resilience, that I am capable. And I think between the two of them, they fostered this sense of the world is my oyster, but it doesn't come without challenges. There is an obvious correlation between harassment on social media uh, and struggles with mental health, like depression, suicidal thoughts. The transgender community is one of the most vulnerable right now, with trans teens being seven times more likely to attempt suicide. So would you say that this call for protection is more important now than ever before? Absolutely. It, it Again, we're just, we're able to, we're at a place now where we're able to draw true connections from online hate to real world harms, you know, and that's just, uh, there's no other way to, to say it. And it's really unfortunate that it already is difficult to be an LGBTQ plus person, a trans person in public. And then when you're being attacked online, um, that's just another layer and dimension of yourself that is is really under pressure, under harm um, from people you may not even know, and that weighs on you. And so, for the LGBT community, especially to our transgender uh, brothers and sisters out there, um, you know, use what products and features we have available to us to uh, to block and to res respect and protect our privacy online. That's my ask of our community as well. Um, and maybe less screen time, to be honest with you, using these platforms less, but really good getting out there, banding together and seeking help where it's provided will really, I think, help in the short term. Yeah, that's such helpful information. And also, what can we as allies do to help join the fight? You know, I was thinking uh, about this just this morning about what we can do. And a lot of times it, it feels really out of reach when we are trying to uh, make change with huge tech companies or with big names. But I think it's just dialing in to what is the queer existence? It's about sharing our stories. So in addition to calling your elected officials and speaking out at school boards and making local elections count. It really is just about sharing your stories. Where have you been affected? How have you been affected? 
Um, how have you been affected by hate online? Sharing our stories, whether it's just posting about it or talking to your neighbors about it uh, uh, around your community, or even calling your local reporters. You know, this is this is where local news, I think, is really powerful. Also, it's really about sharing your story, as painful at, as that might be. I think that's what's really going to dial up the change in this space because when people start hearing the real world stories of what's happening, I think that's when people are going to really stand up and stand by the community. I want to talk about signs and synchronicities because you had a vision during COVID in which you saw yourself teaching mudras to millions of people. And as a result, you quit your corporate job. You followed that vision, which which takes a lot of strength and courage to do. What gave you that courage and the knowing to do so? Yes. So uh, in COVID, you know, I think a lot of us were forced to look inwards because we, we had to. So my process of that looked like just meditating more often. I was already meditating. I had already been meditating for med- many, many years. But having the corporate job, I found it hard or maybe didn't take it quite as seriously at the time. But since I had nothing else to do and all my thoughts were coming up, I started meditating uh, very deeply and with a particular mudra that's also in my one of my first ebooks because it's it's actually done very popular on TikTok as well. It's the mudra that Buddha used, and it's it's the one that I just was meditating with it one day, and I received the vision of of this happening, and I was so overwhelmed by it. I'll be honest, I started crying, and I told my mother. I spoke to her about it because I'm very close with her. I said, I don't want that. I don't, I don't think I'm big enough to do that. What I saw in the vision, I don't think I have, you know, I was doubting myself. I was like, who am I to ever teach millions, millions of people? My voice is cracking because I, I think I still have uh, a lot of, you know, it's wow. That's such a big vision, right? How does somebody live up to such a vision? But at the same time, having the vision gave me the strength to keep asking questions And I remember, I think I saw a video maybe on TikTok that said, you know, ask the universe questions and then ask for signs and it will come to you. I had never heard of this. I had never practiced this, but I thought, what have I got to lose? I'll just ask for a sign. I asked for a very specific sign and it gives me chills to this day. I'm not going to share it, but I asked for a very specific sign and it showed up glaring in my face within, I think it was a couple of days. And I, the sign I asked for, I said, okay, if if I'm meant to quit my job and do this, show me the sign. It showed up and 24 hours after seeing the sign, I put in my two weeks notice. I said, that is too weird. I can't ignore that. And I won't ignore that. So I put in my two weeks and I never look back. (laughs) How amazing. And I think speaking to the universe, asking for, asking questions, asking for signs, asking for answers is one of the most important things that we can do that we're never taught. I mean, I think a lot of people might feel silly in doing that. It's something that I do every single day. And I think that's one of the benefits of meditation as well is you strengthen that skill. It's not just about that moment. Oh, I had a stressful day, so I'm going to meditate to calm myself down. But over time, you're strengthening that connection to the universe where the answers come quickly and clearly over time, right? Yes, I think if I hadn't already been meditating and come from a place of genuine curiosity, I don't know that that sign would have shown up so quickly and so glaringly. I think it showed up because I was so open-minded at that moment with the vision that I received because it was so clear and so, again, I say the word visceral because you can feel it in your body. And that's what I think made me, I, I feel chills right now talking about it. And I always do because it's, it's real somewhere. It's already real in some reality, right? But feeling it from where I was at, and at that point, I was very, very distant from this. Now I feel much closer, but, but at that point I was too far away. And so it felt frightening and I wanted to check. I thought I, I, I need to check that this is real and I got my sign. So I'm Sonia Baghdadi. Thanks for watching and advocating for more stories and content like this. Visit advocate.com and advocatechannel.com.